superstar. He is an absolute superstar, Tom Mitchell. Crips at the back. Crips is too good. Neil, 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 yes! Oh, how good was that? G'day, guys. Lockie Neil here, back for a podcast. I've been pretty quiet in this space for a couple of years, so... <laughs> Good to jump on with good mate Tommy and have a chat. It'll be good. Mate, let's do it. I'm, uh, I'm glad that you've taken the reins on this. We've had Cripper in, but it's good to have uh, the real deal Neil, as you like to call yourself, in the <laughs> studio for the first time of the year. Uh, big game for you boys tonight as well. I'm not sure when this potty will be released, but Lions v Dogs. V Dogs, yeah, big game. Um, obviously, our season hasn't gone to plan so far, so if we can get one tonight... Um, It'll set us up well for the back half of the year coming off the bye. But yeah. we've got to, got to deal with the big bond first. And I know. Well, he was up and about last week when we played. Yeah, played he dominated, him. didn't he? Well, Dacos was doing Dacos things. But it'll be interesting to see who gets three votes that night because Bont was – he would have had 38 and two and tore the game apart. Trelaw was, was pretty good too. As well, wasn't Liber, Liber back tonight? Yeah, yeah. Liber back in. I think Ed Richard's not playing. But, yeah, yeah, Ads is having a great year too. True. Um, I think over the last like five or six weeks, he's, he's – He's averaging like 35, 36. So Big numbers. Back to Tommy Mitchell. L- mate, it's, it's locking your circa, numbers. Circa 2017. <laughs> um, back in the glory days. So, yeah, that's yeah, it's been a bit of a different year so far, um, especially compared to last year, probably for both sides, Collingwood and, and Brizzy. You guys going a bit better than us. But um, we had a look at some stuff. I feel like we're still – our game's in pretty good order. We're just pretty inaccurate at the moment as well, mm-hmm. which doesn't, doesn't help. Um, so hopefully Big Joey's got his kicking boots on tonight and um, can can get over the dogs. Yeah, it's so interesting that because obviously both teams, Collingwood and Brisbane, were there on the last Saturday in September last year. Do you think that's had an impact on the way you've started the season, like as a team, like a bit slower? Like we were very slow out of the block, so we were zipping three, I think. Yeah. Um, like what, what do you put it down to? Like clearly you guys have the cattle and the players and the team that have been there and done it. You can easily turn it around. You probably will. But what do you... Do you have any answers for it? Not really. Probably, like, to be honest, accuracy killed us in a yeah. fair few games this year. And I reckon this year we've just had massive um, lapses in concentration. So last year, probably last 10, 15 minutes, teams might kick two or three. Mm. Um, this year we've let, like, teams kick six or seven in a row and sort of blow the game open. Or we have a lead and like, the first game, classic example against Carlton, up by 40-odd points and they storm, storm back in the third. I think we kicked like zero five or zero six that quarter as well. Yeah. Um, so goal kicking has been a massive one. We've spoken about it. Um, and then probably just a bit of chemistry and stuff as well. Um, we've got some new guys coming in with some, we've had like five ACLs the last 12 months it's as crazy, well. Crazy, isn't it, the ACLs? So we've um, had a little bit of change to the dynamic of the team, but some of the youths brought like a lot of energy and Logan Morris is playing good footy. Bruce Reveal is a bit of a cult hero already. Everyone's like, Chanting Bruce when he gets the ball <laughs> um, at the Gabba. So, um, yeah, I, I, I sort of felt like we were well prepared. Like our running and everything in the preseason was like better than the, the last year. And we just came out with the same 0 3, I think, the start. Puts you on the back foot. You sort of play a catch up. But, um, yeah, like you said, feel like we've still got enough talent and um, work ethic there that we can turn it around. Just yeah. Hopefully we can. Well, it seems like it hasn't affected your season at all. Like, I remember the game. It was against us when you hit your ankle. Oh yeah. And I, I remember I come saw you the next day. I've never seen an ankle that blown up. <laughs> like your ankle was purple, and it was literally the size of like a volleyball. Yeah. So you've done well to barely miss a game, but it still hasn't affected your form. Yeah, but, um, I've sort of been a bit up and down, but it's sort of the same with the team though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like my game. I feel like I'm using the ball um, maybe better than than last year. Probably just my like contested clearance numbers aren't as high, but um yeah still got 12 to go so what about in terms of the basketball we both love our nba you're going the mavs to win it all i think so i think they'll get it done it's more of like not fairy tale but a better story i reckon so i'm i'm rooting for the mavs um don't know why but i just don't really like boston i feel like they're not that they're boring or their star players aren't stars but i feel like Luca and Kyrie are top of the tree yeah. stars. So you just naturally gravitate towards and want to watch. Yeah, you want to watch Whereas, them more than the others. Yeah. It's like watching, you know, you'd rather watch Lockie Neal than Tom Mitchell sort of stuff, you know? Like <laughs> You'd rather watch Nick Dacos than Lockie Neal. <laughs> yeah. But like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, like they're superstars. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And then like Drew Holiday, Derek White, Porzingis. But Luca and Kyrie 
arguably two of the best five in the league. You know, yeah. they, they just create more excitement. I think when you watch, like anything could sort of happen. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, just like the skill of of Kyrie is unbelievable. Yeah. Luca does some crazy things. He looks like he's going slow motion. He's like, like Pendles, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He literally yeah, moves he in is. slow motion, dictates the pace. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's pretty special to watch those two. Um, now that my Warriors are nowhere near it, so <laughs> jump on the Mavs. I think I said to you before the playoffs that they were sort of, they're not really dark horses, I guess, but I said they're a chance. Bit of a smoky. Um, but yeah, hopefully Celtics choke again. But. Uh, Paul Zingas back, I think. He's back, yeah. Yeah. So that's obviously good for their lineup. Yeah, and then um, both like the, oh, I suppose Boston are more depth. They got like Derek White as mm. well. He's been playing some good ball. Um, it's good to have a couple of Aussies. In How good's that? Maps. Dante yeah. XM, Josh Grant. Yeah. Well, you would have seen a few of the things pop up on socials, but was actually fortunate enough to go over there to Dallas in the off season. Spent a day with the Dallas Mavs, met Kyrie, got a pick with him. Yeah, good. But then also spent some time with Josh and Dante. Yeah. And we are just chatting about, um, you know, life in Dallas. And at that point in time, they weren't – they were a playoff contention team. But yeah. now they're two Aussie boys playing in the NBA finals. Good pretty chance cool, to win the ring. It? It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, how, did you enjoy Dallas? Oh, I did like it. City? It was yeah. very – so Austin, Texas. You've been to Austin? Yeah. So we want to run into each other in Austin one year, I reckon. With the, we got the, all the Freo boys one year. Yeah, Austin City Limits. Good time over there. We love <laughs> Austin. But anyway, Dallas is probably the major city that's closest to Austin. Yeah. But it's more of like a city. Like there's – now Austin's got like kind of like a cultural feel to it, like those cool like dingy bars. Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, what's that street called? That main main street. Yeah, like Rainbow Street or something. Rainy Street. Rainy. Rainy Street. Is that what so, it is? Yeah, I think it's Rainy Street. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably too blind to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's rainy, but um, yeah, like Austin's got that sort of country feel, like all the road houses and steakhouses, whereas Dallas is just purely just a, city, a city, so there's nothing too, yeah. too fancy about it. But um, you've been in Nashville, yeah, when there last year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's How cool is Nashville? Yeah, loved it. That was a great city. How far is that from Dallas? I reckon it's a couple of hour flight. Wonder if like Luca and Kyrie just pop over. Yeah, pop in. Well, I wonder, wonder where they have the championship parade if they get it done. Well, obviously being Dallas, but you always hear the stories of when the Cavs won it that year. Like they finished. Remember when they beat your Golden your State, Warriors, yeah. and then they like oh detour via Vegas. On yeah, the way yeah, back. yeah. That'd be wild. It would be and when Matty Dellavedova was in, he was like drinking VB or something. Was something he out. really? I think so. Or Corona maybe. I don't know. He was drinking something that ever like. LeBron was getting bottles of champagne and like yeah. would have been thousands and thousands of dollars worth. Yeah. And Delhi was just sitting there drinking a beer. Good on him. That's as Aussie <laughs> as it gets. So good. I do love how they, the pregame walkouts, like especially for playoff time, you know, when they get kitted up. Yeah. Like they're getting really kitted up. But like you look at the Aussie boys, they're pretty safe. Yeah. Even Luke is pretty safe. They don't I'm just trying to wonder what, what sort of setup, if that was in AFL, what you'd run with. with your <sighs> Jeez, a hoodie and some jeans. Yeah, right? I'd be um, like you as well. Low key. We've got some blokes like, Harry Sharp and Kyle Lohman, Logan Morris, the young boys, they'd, like, Into the they'd love it. Yeah, yeah. They'd, they'd wear some outrageous stuff. Um, we got Quayne or Lipinski who would yeah. get right into the fashion. Yeah. IQ, he'd kit oh, up, wouldn't yeah. he? He'd get braces on every, yeah. every game, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New kit. Who would be the worst at the Pies, worst <sighs> dressed? Mate, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be up there. Um, <laughs> who'd be worst? It's sort of like the dads that don't care enough, know. you know? Like, you're a dad now. Yeah, so I'm like, a dad, yeah. Steel, Pendles, Howie would just like yeah. literally rock up in thongs if they This could. guy's not a dad, but he'd be worse. I already know he'd be the worst dressed. Harris Andrews. Oh, really? Yeah. Shocking kids. Oh, just dorky. <laughs> he kind of be... looks like a dad, doesn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's the dad of like of the footy club. Yeah, is he? Yeah. Um, How does so the co-captaincy work with you two? Are yeah, you the solo captain now? So, nah, no, nah, co. Yeah. So like what, what are you better at? What's he better at? And how do you share the responsibility? Um, he's He's really good at like organization so like when we have our leaders meeting and stuff he usually runs that because he's the organized one he's got his notebook <laughs> like he's all across um everything that's happening around the club i'm more of take it day by day and come in and lead by example yeah um but your preparation's off the charts so. yeah like my, i feel like i my prep i can drag guys along yeah um, my extra touch stuff like that mm. um i'm really good at and i feel like we cover the whole playing group really well with um, our personalities he's quite yeah. different to me but we sort of cover the whole group with good. with um both of us so um he's um he's been unreal I've, i sort of actually thought 
before we were both named, I was like, oh, I think the club should only have one. And I wasn't saying it should have been me, but I was mm. like, if they're going to um, pick it, it should just be one. But having done it now, Co, it's actually worked so well for both of us. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he feels the same, but yeah. I certainly feel like it's helped me. Um, even game day and stuff uh, might be – so we'd sort of do two weeks where you'll do like the talk pre-game and half-time yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then the other bloke does it for two weeks, so like home and away. But there's been games where like I'm struggling, I feel like I mentally need to sort of look after myself a bit more and I'll just say to Harris, mate, can you just take yeah. the boys? Um, I need to sort of get myself right. Yeah. Um, so having him there has been awesome for that. Because mm. I feel like, guys, when you're doing it solo, you, s you can't like hide from it at yeah. all. And you're, you're always the face. Yeah, you've, you have yeah. to front up and yeah. um, speak to the group. And even if you're not feeling 100% um, yourself, you still got to sort yeah. of put a facade on. But um, having him there, you're sort of able to look after yourself a little bit more at times and yeah. being new to the role, it's been good. Um, well, I found that a bit as well. So I played my 200th against you boys in Brizzy and got to do a few little things like, you know, speak to the boys pre-game. Yeah. And you take for granted, like Darcy Moore is a great speaker. You've heard him talk and he speaks before every break, every half time. Yeah. But you actually always need to go in with a little plan of what you're going to say because otherwise you can get there and be a deer in the headlights and be like, <laughs> I've boys, done, I've I got nothing. I've done a couple where I've stuffed it, but the boys just sort of It's laugh. almost I, funnier. I know, and I reckon in that one, like right before the bounce, no one's really listening no, anyway because you're about in. to play. Yeah, yeah. so um, sometimes it's a bit of a rev up, sometimes it might be instructional, but yeah, I've gone in like a couple of times, coin toss, walking back, you're like, yeah, I got nothing to say here. Yeah. Start talking, you don't know where you're heading with it. And then you're just like, oh, stop, I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry, boys, go well. Well, it's pretty yeah, funny. Like you said, no one ever remembers it anyway. So yeah. it's like, it's almost just like a, it's one of those things in footy that it's an expectation that you have to huddle up before a game and walk out. And yeah. everyone just does it, probably just because that's how it's always been. I wonder what would happen if you just like, after the coin toss, yeah, we're going that way, boys, and just, just in your out. positions, ready to go. Might give it a go. Maybe yeah. that's what's going wrong. Try that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that gets a win, just stick with it. I think Harris is doing it tonight. Is He's he? on the next couple of weeks. So. Who did it for the, the finals, grand final? How do you work that out? Because that's like a, a cool thing to look back and be a part of if you're the... Yeah, I sort of... I wanted to take a bit more of a backseat. Harris grew up in Brizzy yep. um, Academy. So I sort of grand final week handed everything to oh, really? him. Um, yeah, I was... It, it just didn't really phase me too much, yeah. to be honest. Like, yeah. pretty awesome experience being captain of an AFL club in a grand final team. But um, all the sort of external stuff, like he did the hold the cup up mm. and um, I think I might have done a presser after. But, yeah, I sort of wanted him to be the face of it, to be honest. He's been at Brizzy his whole career. Mm. Um, yeah, he's been through some hard times at that footy club and I sort mm. of wanted him to enjoy that and, and have that week in a way. Yeah. Um, well, so you'd already had a pretty busy that. week with the Brown though as well. So you're yeah, probably, knowing true. you as well, you're probably just like, I don't want to make this too much about myself. Yeah. You, you won your second brown though, which is, we'll get to that as well. That's pretty bloody unbelievable. Not many have done that. And yeah. you could have, you probably should have three. I should have, I sh should have two, two will do. <laughs> two, you will take two. <laughs> well, the Cribble <laughs> one's funny because, um, well, we got off the suspension, but you, you, did you come, you lose by a vote? Yeah, one. One vote. Yeah. All right. Imagine if you're too tired, that would have been, I remember really we all cool. remember we all caught up before the yeah. event, and I'm like, how yeah. good would it be if you two tied it? Yeah, it would have been, would have been awesome. Been that would have been a great party. It'd be good to. Sh I don't know how you feel, but well, it's pretty awesome. Your first one, I reckon, as well. You're like mm. unbelievable. You're winning it, but it'd be cool to be able to share it with someone else. That experience, yeah, especially like a mate. Too. True, true. Um, maybe not so much if you didn't like the other bloke, but yeah, if it was with a mate, it'd be an awesome experience. But even if you're tied with someone, like in ten years, at least you got someone. That you like one with it yeah and you can, no, always make a connection it, for sure i don't know if you remember this chat we had but i reckon it was the year must have been the year i think 2018 i might have won it that night we we're chatting on brownlow night and you were literally going through the trade yeah thing in the moment and you're like because we've always been close from i guess going through the same age group together we've had a few nights out in america that's where yeah. we we sort of got to know each other even better and i remember having a chat with you and you're like oh i've got this thing from brizzy i'd obviously made a move from sydney to or thorn we sort of yeah. just had a chat about it and clearly you've made a pretty good decision although you had a great thing going at freo as well but for you individually what you've achieved and what the team's achieved with all the prelims and things but do you remember that chat oh, there's a lot of messy chats having brownlow night but do you remember the chat at all or not really uh i can't really remember if yeah. you remind me i'll be able to 
Or you can't really remember it either? No, I can remember most of it. I remember chatting with you and then I remember seeing Dave Swallow walking around in socks around the nightclub. Um, Is that, was that Hodgie fell over? The, yeah. He fell over a couch or something Yeah, Hodgie, well. and Hodgie fell asleep and people were taking photos of him <laughs> yeah. in Stewie Giles' suite after yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah, it's, we sort of had a similar pathway like from that period of our careers, yeah. um, starting at a club and... Um, probably had similar coaches like Ross and, and Horse. Mm. Seemed like, I don't, I've never been coached by Horse, but um, pretty good coaches. Um, they drive you to compete and defend and mm. like teach you all the um, important things in footy and um, then switch clubs and go on to have pretty successful careers. You've, you've got a flag, I don't. Yeah, well, um, we'll talk about that because that was one of the all-time games. Oh, far out, like how do you... Like we, we've obviously had some good catch-ups about this because that was that was like one of the most iconic games and really could have gone either way. But also like we've caught up because we've been great mates. As we said, we had to play on each other for parts of that game. And just for, I almost felt bad for the way I had to sort of go <laughs> and play on you. You know it's what I mean? It's a final, mate. Yeah, it's I know. We've, we've, we've obviously had plenty of beers and, and we've, <laughs> we've had good catch-ups about it. But it's almost like grand final day. I don't know how you felt, but you almost have to, go into this sort of character that's not yourself just it's it's whatever it takes yeah. almost you know what i mean yeah for and sure we were obviously all butting heads out there but you know it's it's good to know that we get to you know off the footy field nothing changes but what are your memories from the day because it was yeah a crazy day i sort of cause i you've have you played in two or played in 16 and lost yeah yeah and you played so in 13 i was lost. a sub so it was a little bit different but i couldn't really remember much from 13 so i was mm. like people were some of the um, boys were like, oh, you've been through it. Like, mm. sort of give us an insight. I'm like, well, I can't really remember 2013, 10 years ago. Yeah. Sub, um, completely different group. And I was, but last year, or first thing I remember is how quickly the game goes compared to like a normal game. Mm. Just felt like the whole, the quarters were just like over. Yeah. And I'd come off for a spell like halfway through the quarter, I'd get back on, I'd be like, the quarters only got like 10 minutes left. And yeah. I, was, I didn't have my best day, so I was sort of like feeling like Fuck, I can't get into the game a bit. Um, so I remember just how quickly the game felt like it went. Like all of a sudden it was half time, and mm. I was like far out. I just the game's just gone so quickly yeah. so far. Um, but yeah, you guys got off to a good start. We sort of came back. Zach Bailey's goal, yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. I was like, Crazy right, now it's two of them. now we're going. Link McCarthy, I remember his goal from the boundary put us maybe two and a half goals up or something mm. but it just you could sort of tell um in that first half that it was just going to be one of those days where it's gonna, it was really high scoring first mm. half and then it slowed down a bit in the second half the the scoring but you could tell from early on that it was going to go down to the wire yeah. i just remember thinking this it's just gonna yeah come down to the last five minutes which it did yeah um and then you guys i remember you guys were peppering a bit and kept missing a few i'm like oh Thank God. Yeah, the third quarter sort it. of kept the game open a bit. Yeah, you had a fair few sort of gettable shots. Um, having said that, you guys kicked some unbelievable goals as well, yeah. like outside 50. Yeah, true. Geordies, so it was sort of Geordies, yeah. Felt, um, felt, yeah, Geordies, Crispy, I think, kicked a couple of rippers. True. Um, Steel, obviously, in the last quarter. Yeah. That would have to be the longest kick he's kicked Mate, in his life. Yeah, he said it multiple times. He always <laughs> says the ball's still flying now, it's still going. <laughs> yeah. Just landed in Brizzy, just yeah. landed in the yeah. gather. It's like, Goals like that, unbelievable for you guys. But we had some special goals too. It yeah. was a pretty, pretty awesome day to be a part of. Yeah. Um, and like you always look back, especially when you lose and go, oh, I wish I did this, I wish mm. I did that. But um, I would ra way rather be a part of that day than not. So yeah, well, I always yeah. look back and go, it's amazing to be a part of that game. Although I didn't play my best footy, it was still a really special experience. Mm. Um, Remember Charlie kicking us in front of that centre bounce goal from Dacos to Dugowie. Like oh, we'd, yeah. We'd, I would have watched that 30 times and just like critiqued it from our end and just been like, far out. If we did things differently, what yeah. if? See, that's that's a moment, right, in the game that is obviously remembered by a lot of people because of the time of the game. But yeah, imagine, you know, there's thousands of errors in the game that equate to the same result that yeah. just aren't as... It's not as monumental in that Correct. moment. It's just, but, so you analyse that more, but yeah. there's probably 20 moments of equal significance. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think that's, you could sort of tell that game was going to be like that though. And um, when Joey kicked the goal to get us within a goal. Man, that was scary. That was like, 
you, you boys were coming hard. Yeah. And you had, a bit, you had a big fight last fight. Like, you started to really get going. Yeah, well, I'd done nothing little... for the first 95, so I had to do something. <laughs> but, no, nah, I felt like I'd lifted a little bit in that last patch. But, um, yeah, we just couldn't quite get there. Yeah. Yeah, you got a free a, kick, I think, in a, yeah. at a stoppage. And that, I reckon I looked over at the benches and it had like 30 seconds or something. I'm like, we're yeah. cooked here. Do you remember the heat that day? Because I remember going in thinking, you guys obviously playing the heat a lot in Brizzy, blue skies, yeah. and it was hot. I remember coming a few times like, I don't know whether it was the mental fatigue, and you would have probably had mental fatigue too because you had Brownlow night, all that media, then you got parade. Like, people probably don't understand. That takes energy and a toll. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you felt that game day or not or whether it didn't have an effect, but... I remember obviously didn't have to go through that that particular week heading into the game, but even being a part of the parade and the crowd and the heat, just coming off a few times, about like, this is this is tough. Yeah, no, nah, it was, and I think it was really hot for the parade as well. It, felt, it was, yeah. Um, and I'm I'm pasty as, so I was like, hey, I was worried look, about. You're looking burning. in the mirror, don't worry, I'm with you. <laughs> I was worried about burning at the parade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it was Piper's birthday that day. So it was it's a big week for us. Like, bloody earth. Um, but it was, like I said, awesome, awesome yeah. week to be a part of. Um, yeah, poor Piper was getting booed on her birthday in the parade. Oh, no. All the Collingwood <laughs> fans. How did she me. like it? Did she like the experience? She was good, was yeah. She was, on. like, waving. Even, like, there was some <laughs> pretty wild fans there that were, like, booing and, like, yelling <laughs> yeah. stuff at me. And I was in with Fags and he was sort of like, oh, you were right. I'm like, yeah, mate, it's fine. Like, yeah. no stress. And Piper was, like, waving to everyone. <laughs> clapping so Being friendly yeah yeah it was a pretty special experience to have her there and um yeah so the parade day was her birthday yeah um day before the game so um she got to come in the card and yeah, yeah it's a cool thing it'll be a cool thing to look back on yeah 100 sure. i'm sure yeah, that time's was, coming that was pretty awesome um but yeah it was hot i remember pre-game walking around with link and it like it's not as humid here so it's a different kind mm. of heat but it was yeah it was bloody hot on the day um, you couldn't get enough water in, but, um, yeah, couldn't get it done. Yeah, well, your time's coming. Too good not to get one. I'm sure the Lions will get one. Um, what about, so, the Brownlow on the Monday night? You, who came second? You won. Nick was up there. Bont second, Nick third. I but think. you actually sent Nick a message, like, almost feeling bad that you'd pinch, yeah. pinch his medal, but clearly you'd had another great season and arguably should have already won two anyway. But tell us a little bit about about that and what you were feeling because did you genuinely go into the night thinking you were no chance yeah i didn't think i'd win it i thought like oh, i'm a chance to be sort of top three maybe top five um but it was funny i, I sort of thought if things go right i'll be a chance because nick's gone down like mm. I, I thought i'd probably poll the last two games as well so did, I was like, you, if did I'm, you do that in the end yeah i like, went three three at, at the end the last two games right and i sort of thought if i'm like six votes behind nick this is what i was thinking but with two to go i was like i'm a chance to tie with him or something yeah. if i so everything would have to go right though um and then because i think i think like the top five in the brown though was the same as the coaches award or something so pretty accurate, not looking pretty at accurate stats and stuff it's a pretty good effort because i yeah. know when i watch games if i was to give like three two one i'd be so far off it are they not allowed to look at stats i thought they might be able to well, apparently they come out and said like they, they don't. don't. Yeah, 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 I don't, I don't know. know, but yeah. surely yeah. you'd have to sneak a look. Yeah, <laughs> well, tell them when you're flying tonight, Friday night footy, and your head's had Neil eight and a half times. Go to the umpy, <laughs> mate. Just have a look up there, will you? Have a look at the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you still maybe they pro they probably see that. Well, they would see it. They? Yeah. Like you, as players, you're lying if you say you don't see it. Yeah, oh, it just flashes up. It's like always in, front, in, yeah. in your face. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I sort of thought I'd be in the mix, but I thought yeah, I probably thought Nick um bond would be would be hard to beat mm. um but yeah i polled i polled better than i expected early and was like oh far out i'm in with a chance dunks kept saying after like round i think when i polled three against gws which i shouldn't have polled um he was like you're gonna win it what were your stats that day we had 20. we won by four or five goals but charlie kicked seven he really? polled two yeah like go. I was okay, but not. Yeah, I it is funny. Like I remember, you know, there's games where you don't poll and you think, "How did you not?" And then there's games yeah. you poll and then you're like, "How? How did I?" I think I said it after. But it kind presser, of all, it always evens out a bit. Sort of feels like it. I probably there was probably a couple of games. Like I think I polled one against you guys early on, and I didn't really play that well. But mm. it's 
it was pretty even performance by us that day. Um, but then, yeah, there's games where you think oh, I'll pull two or three here and you get one or none. And it's, so yeah. it does balance out a bit. But I'm sure, um, I hope and I'm sure Nick will oh, win, win yeah. one or two. Has to. Um, I reckon he's... A big chance this year. Oh, mate, massive chance. He's a freak. He's, um, he's, he's so good to watch. I don't know how you feel playing with him. Um, and seeing him at training and stuff, but some of the stuff he can do on field, like I'm loving watching him at the moment in the midfield, Yeah, go about his clearance work and his fast, like, because that's sort of what I base my game on, my fast feet, and he's just, like, taking it to another level with mm -hmm. his footwork around stoppages and reading it off hands, off yep. the rucks, and even off, like, spill balls off other players. He's just so quick to react and just know where the ball is going to go. Um, so I'm loving watching what he's doing around stoppage at the moment. I think... You always hear like oh outside player or whatever, but the stuff he's doing around contests at the moment, yeah. like whoever's saying that can have yeah. a good hard look at themselves because <laughs> yeah. it's um yeah it's pretty impressive. Um, and you you get front row seats, and I'm sure he does a lot of stuff at training as well. But um, he seems like he's he's pretty tough as well. Um, yeah, well his pressure's gone to another level this year, and he's he's tackling and yeah and doing all the little things which everyone sees the numbers and the amazing kicks he does inside out and the ball winning and the little knock-ons to himself and all this stuff that you would be aware of. But there's the other things which the team value that he's really yeah. embraced and doing as well. So, and even just the way he carries himself as a good teammate, like I'm about to have surgery tomorrow and I'll be, I'm gonna be out for a period of time. But he's one of the guys who's made an effort as a young guy to go out of himself to be like, you know, we're here for you. Yeah. Um, how can I help? Yeah, I'll be awesome. checking in with you. Let's do, let's still do this training together. Let's do this touch together. I'm like, how's this guy in his third year? Literally, yeah, could be the captain of the club if you if we needed him to be, and he will be in yeah. time. Darcy Moore, awesome captain. Uh, but when next time's come, he's going to be so ready. But in terms of what you just asked, what you know, what you see on game days, what you see at training as well, like yeah. literally some drills at training, he runs the whole field and kicks a goal. Really, it's like he's playing Oz kickers. It's crazy. He he trains pretty hard, doesn't he? As he does. well, like yeah, he's just got that. Like your quick feed, I think. What you touched on is probably the best I've seen. Like you can get onto the spill ball quicker than anyone, and because you're so smart, you read it quick. Yeah. And but he's like that too. But and he's also got this another level of acceleration, yeah, which we probably as <laughs> handball we hand, we're probably or you probably kick a little bit more now. But handball first type players initially yeah. always. Yeah. But he's got that acceleration to be able to get out and kick as well. Yeah, he can get out of trouble. Yeah. And you want him kicking the ball too. So it's um yeah what he's doing what he's done for his first three years of his career is unbelievable. Mm, mm. Like, I'm, yeah. I haven't seen anything like it. Maybe Judd is maybe yeah. he was pretty good early on, but yeah. and he could be, he could end up being one of the best of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we will. will Any, who else have you enjoyed watching this year? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, who have I enjoyed watching? Chad Warner. Yeah. I watch <laughs> him. I'm thinking he's a different beast at the moment. Like I'd love to have a crack. Like I, I like tackling, but I'd love to have a crack at tackling. Cause I look at everyone and he just, Flicks him off. Yeah. Like he must just be that strong that he's untackleable. He seems like as well, he's like, he's got so many gears as well with his run. Yeah. He just like looks at blokes and he's like that. He loves just taking a bounce. Yeah. He just takes a bounce After the first few meters. I would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we're getting caught. <laughs> <laughs> getting smashed from both sides. What about you? Uh, yeah. All those Sydney mids are like been unreal to watch this year. Isaac's had a great start to the year. Um, him and Nick are probably the two at the moment. Or oh, Cripper's going pretty well too. Mate, Cripper's a brand um, smoky, I reckon. Yeah, he's having he's having a great start to the year. Um, but Goulden, love I love watching his kick. Like he's so composed mm. and just finds the right option, finds a target all the time. Um, I'm loving what Jason Horn Francis is doing at Port as well. Good one. Um, like just as a midfielder, his stoppage stuff. He hits the ball at some serious speed, um, and finds a way to take it more often than not love watching zach butters i think he's a star he's got traits as well that like yeah. i feel i feel like when you're a little bit slower than other mids you're like envy oh yeah you wish you had just, speed yeah just take off yeah um he's so tough but he'd be like i don't know the numbers but he bounces a lot so he's like run bounce carry yeah. overlap um, and he's pretty tough on that though like at the same time we you know you'd envy their speed but then so many players in the league would envy your ball winning you know everyone yeah. would be like well how do you do that so yeah, there's give and take for everything yeah yeah everyone's got but, different yeah. traits speed would be good um but he's so composed with ball in hand as well love watching watching butters go about it um that'll do don't yeah. want to pump too many up 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we got to play. I got to play. Yeah, you got to play. Yeah, well. you can't give them too much confidence. <laughs> well, let's get more into your mindset because I've told you this, but I think of our sort of generation of players we've gone through that you're the best player in our generation, and you're the, probably the player that I watch the most. Oh, I appreciate from when we, that. Well, I've told you. You're just saying that because nah. I'm yeah. <laughs> and you're a, well, you're a ball magnet. But yeah, like. Yeah, I, people obviously know how good you are, but you're you're literally the Greg Williams of this generation. Like your your cleanliness, your you've I think you've elevated your game from you know when we were coming through together. Uh, you've naturally become you know winning the same amount of ball, but then you kick more, you come out the front more. Um, we've spoken a little bit about whether you made that a priority, and I, I probably did the same thing. I made those transitions around when I probably hit my peak, yeah, and then probably broke my leg and probably lost it, lost <laughs> lost a step. But you know, I can still do my thing. But um, yeah, no, you've just taken it to another level. But I'm just keen to for the listeners because I know they're going to find it so interesting. You've won two brown lows. Um, fuck, I don't even know how many all Australians been S. But a lot, like pl- I'm saying, five plus of each probably. Uh, there's still more to come. What do you put that down to? Is that let, let's start with your preparation. So how do you prepare during the week for a game? Yeah, so I think like I feel like in the AFL, everyone's got their physical bucket is full. So you're doing whatever the S and C tell you to do. Sometimes um, if you've got knocks or niggles, you might not be able to do as much as what you want on the track or whatever. But one thing that um, I don't think a lot of players utilise is the mental bucket and filling that up. So um, for me, I was lucky. I don't, did you have Brett Kirk at all when you were yep. at Sydney? Uh, briefly. Yeah, so he was. He came to Frio, um, I want to say my second or third year, 2013 or 14, um, and was midfield coach. And he was he was so good for me, like, in this space, the mental stuff. He He's <laughs> way ahead of me with it, but he just taught me a few little things that um, I could use through the week with mental prep and... So for me, I'll, the night before every um, main session, I'll do like mental imagery. Um, every morning I'll do five, 10 minutes of meditation, just like breathing techniques and just setting myself up for a good day. But um, my mental visualization, so early on it was, I used to get scripts from our psych and have headphones and listen to different scenarios that you'd come across in game. So. It might be um, like a 50-50 ground ball, you, your technique, putting your head over it. Um, it's basically doing reps of training without actually doing it physically. Um, so I do ground ball, um, I do stoppage craft, like it's getting hit to this position and the psych would talk me through the scenario. So you've got your eyes closed and you're listening and you're picturing yourself doing all these actions. Um, and then it got to a stage where I could do it without the, the tape. So now I can, the night before main session, two times a week um, I'll run through scenarios that I'll probably go through at training and then I'll do it um, like the night before a game. So last night I'll do about five, ten minutes of visualisation as well. Um, So that's sort of my like training prep mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, like I said, meditate every morning, five, ten minutes just to set my day up. It's more just like a gratitude thing. Um, Always think about how lucky I am to be playing AFL footy, doing what I love, Mm. Um, best job in the world. So try not to ever take that for granted, no matter what's going on with the team, my form, like whatever's happening. Um, Always just so thankful that I'm I'm able to play um, the game I grew up wanting to to play. Mm. So keeping things in perspective is is pretty important for me. Um, And then just my balance and stuff off field, obviously Mm. got a family now. So love spending time with them, um, doing a, an MBA course. Um, so that takes up a little bit of time too. Um, and then probably the one, the other one is like relationships, making sure I'm investing in friends, family. Mm. Um, obviously my immediate family, Jules and Piper, but also my family back home in, in SA, uh, making sure I invest enough time with them and yeah. my mates who have sort of been there from the start. and. Um, people that you meet along the way that you're close with, making sure you invest time in them as well. I think it's Mm. important not to lose that along the way too. Um, But yeah, that's probably a little bit on on the mental side of it for Mm. me. Um, Keeps me driven and um, I think as well, like my thing that I use from day one as well is every year, almost every week trying to improve on where you were the week Mm. before. So 
of what is it? What is it? Thirteenth year this year. Yeah, thirteen for us. Um, Come a long way since that SAVWA game at <laughs> Marvel, was it? When we yeah, played I think it. that was at Marvel. Yeah. Um, but always look like you're never going to be the perfect player. So just trying to pick, even if it's a strength of yours. But um, like you said, with the coming out the front, like I found I was able to find a lot of ball, but my meters gain was quite low. Mm. Um, wasn't damaging. In, so I have come home with 35, but wasn't doing much with them. So trying to find ways to improve my ball use and, and things like that. Goal kicking, um, mm. went through a couple of years where I was able to get forward and kick goals if you if your role allows it like at the moment i'm not kicking many goals but the way we're playing it's sort of not really suiting goal kicking for me but yeah um there are opportunities but at the same time you've got to play within the team system too so um but yeah just trying to find little things that you can work on and, and improve on all the time um i haven't really i was probably going to wait till after i finished my career but i'll share it now because i'm not that far away from finishing but before a game in the rooms. Um, so before the game, I'll go out, I'll do a bit of a stretch by myself before anyone's at the stadium. Um, lay down, once again, just think about how grateful I am to be able to be about to play a game of footy um, at the highest level. And at the moment, being the captain, I sort of think that's like I'm about to play a game and be captain of an AFL team. How amazing is that? Just a bit of a gratitude to the two or three minutes um come into the rooms i do a little bit of meditation just before we put our guernseys on um just like slow breathing get my mind right and then just before we run out i'll go and look at myself in the mirror um and basically say if you're on today you're the best player in the afl um it's just more to get my confidence levels up um feel like you're ready to go um and then yeah run out that's the last thing I sort of do before I run out. It's just sort of that final tick. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah. That's what the best athletes in every sport do. You have to think you're the best to be the best, even when you you're may not, not be like the even best. like tonight, I love but you, the way you, Bond you are goes, and you I'll, do have that capacity, but you know, even, you know, as, as you, you may in a couple of years, you may not, but if you taper off, you, you'll still have that same mentality. The mentality yeah, never changes 100%. to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean that, I'm going to go out and have 40 and kick five, but it's about doing yeah. what I have to do to the best of my ability and yeah. um, just sort of fills yourself with with confidence. Um, and then, yeah, out we go. But yeah, man, that's incredible. Like to be, for you to be able to share that because I think so many players in the league would relate to that. Yeah. And I just find so fascinating as well. You're like, you're a pretty laid back character, like, you know, you know, we, we have a great time off here. We're always hanging out, doing things, me, you, Cripper, weddings, all sorts of things, catch ups. Um, but then you've got this incredible discipline and consistency. Like I've given meditation to go and these and, and visualization I do before every game as well. But to create a habit, you've done it so consistently that it's literally just built into your life now. Like it sounds like you don't miss a day. No, nah, it's just a part of me. Like I just, yeah, no one would really know that I do it because I, I don't do it in front of anyone or mm. like I just I've a couple of times like said to the boys this is what I do um but it's hard to you, it's not for everyone as well so I get that but um you can't really do it for them but you can only share your experience and yeah. um your own mentality and what works for you and maybe two or three boys jump on and do a little bit and it helps them and and that's worth it but um yeah I think for me I was ever since I got drafted, I just had a, it's in the mind. Like for me, I was like, I just want to be the best I can be. Mm. Um, and I'll do anything to sort of get there and just keep driving and um, striving to make a career out of it, which I've been fortunate enough to do. Mm. Um, the one thing missing is a flag now. So mm. that's sort of what motivates me every day now. Um, feel like individually um, ticked sort of everything off there, except the premiership and, um, You've obviously won one, so you'd be able to attest to this, but I feel like you'd give everything, it's easy to say, a throwaway line, but you'd give all the individual stuff back just to have a, mm. a premiership with a yeah. group of boys that you love and you'd be able to celebrate that for the rest of your life. So for me, that's, if I could, I'd give it all back and yeah. win a flag or two, it'd be amazing, but you obviously can't do that. So yeah. for me, the biggest motivation is to bring team success back to, back to Brizzy. I think, yeah, bigger than all of that is the relationships you'll leave footy with. Like 
there's life and the human element of actually leaving the game with genuine friendships. Yeah. So that I think that from what I've learned in my fortunate experience of being able to be a part of it last night is, you know, the relationships and being there for people and the human side is bigger than anything. So um, that's the biggest part. But yeah, the, the premiership, I guess, does help connect a little bit more. Maybe it's a, a thing to help bring people back together in, in years to come. But um, mate, I have no doubt that you're, you're right there. You guys are bloody, you've been too good for too long to not be a chance. Like what I've noticed about premiership teams always is you almost need to go through the hurt to get to the final hurdle. Like you think about yeah. any team, like you almost need a significant loss, whether it be making consistent prelims or like Geelong when they won their flag. Like how many years were they yeah, I think just they, there? They like almost there. Prelims or something almost there. They won it? Closer again, back a bit, forward again, win yeah. one. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what that's my, been my take on it. I'm observing teams from afar for a little while. Yeah. But like um, we, yeah, we feel like we've been through a lot of experiences now that we're sort of ready for any situation. Um, and even if we we don't make finals or anything this year, we yeah. feel like we can bounce back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the seasons I feel like the season's wide open this year too. So you just got to mm, hang in know. there. Sydney are obviously flying. Yeah. Um, and they're the team to beat. But yeah, if you can sneak into the finals, I think anything can happen. And this sort of showed last year with like the Giants and Carlton. Obviously, they're the prime examples. But I think Sydney as well. They sort of came from nowhere, yeah. scraped in, got knocked out, and yeah. then look at them this yeah, year. Yeah, they're so, flying, haven't they? Um, yeah, the comp's never been more even. It's it's an exciting time to play. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, we got NBA Finals game one coming up, so we won't do too much more. I've got two more questions for you though. One more, one more serious one, and then one. Not so serious, um, but I was just so fascinated by what you were talking about with your with your prep and everything. Then, so obviously that takes a lot to prepare the way you do with everything you do. I know, I know there's the physical element. You mentioned the physical buckets, but you know your touch and all the, those little things and your preparation. And you've obviously got your things outside of footy with the the stuff you're doing with your study and your family, which help refill your cup up to go back and then energize and put your energy into footy. But how do you recover from a game from a mental sense? Yeah, so that's. I've had this for a few years, well, probably 10 years now. I used to get really caught up in results and performance. And so if I, if I played bad and the team was no good, I was like, for like two or three days, sort of stewing on it and wasn't, probably wasn't a great person to be around, like let it affect your relationships and, and whatnot and just be down in the dumps a bit. Um, I have this thing that, so the night of the game, like after the game, like be as grumpy or whatever as you want. Um, the next day, I'd go and jump in the pool, and it, like it's weird. But I just say it just washes away the game, good or bad. So whether you're best on ground, worst on ground, jump in the pool the next day, wash it away. Obviously, take the learnings from your coaches or whatever, and and your individual stuff. But in terms of your mood um, and letting it affect you, I just leave it in the pool. Washing it away—that's a cool saying. Yeah, I've never heard that. So that's that's something I've done for probably because it was something early on. Um, maybe my first three or four years, but yeah, I'd like still let it linger on like a Tuesday, just be like, oh, yeah, I played so bad and like we lost. Um, just let it affect my mood for a few days. So, yeah, how much yeah. does that wear you down a bad game? Like, you can literally you can hang on to it all week. I still I do it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, if you you can, and then it affects, it affects your recovery, like your actual recovery, physical yeah. recovery, yeah. and your mental recovery. So, then coming into the next game, you're just in a negative energy straight away. Yeah. Um, and it's it's hard to break out of that if you're already there. So you've been better at, in simple terms, just moving on quicker. Moving on way quicker, yeah. yeah. I sort of, I reckon you need time to stew on it a bit. So you give yourself like 24 hours or mm. 16 hours. Um, so if we play Saturday, jump in the pool Sunday morning and then wash it away. Yeah. Enjoy your time, what you're doing on your day off, and then head into the club to get better, learn learn from it, but don't let it affect your, your mood and stuff. Yeah, that's unreal. What do you think of the hoodie, lastly? Uh, because... It's unreal. Yeah, I probably won't take it off till till I have to put my polo <laughs> yeah. on tonight. We might not need it in Brizzy. We've got a tea for you as well for <laughs> if it's a bit hotter up there. But I've noticed as well. I reckon every time I catch up with you, you've got maybe a little bit more ink or a, like another little little ridge. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a bit about your tattoos because obviously you were you didn't have them until the last couple of years. Like, are they just something you like? Are they well, something with something of meaning? Like you've probably been asked about it before. But I've never asked you. Yeah, I've, I've always had like a few little ones and then um, like I had one, I had one on my chest and my foot. I actually got it on footy trip in Hong Kong. So really? Was, yeah. Mick can Barlow too. Can you say what it says that. or not? Uh, it's only half of what it's meant to be. So okay. it's meant to be like um, friends and family or something, but it's I only got half the symbol because 
it like hurt too much. I was at <laughs> 18. I was like, nah, just like just that bit will do. It doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, but that was the first one I got in in Hong Kong. And I've had like little. I had that. I've had that out for ages, but people just sort of don't didn't realize it because it's pretty small. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the la- last off season, I got a fair few. Um, so a lot of them are places that I've been or experiences that I've loved. So um, got like a little island one from the Mount Ives um, with Jules, probably my favourite holiday. The honeymoon. The honeymoon. honeymoon yeah. um, and we went to Fiji. So I was like, oh, with, with Piper, that was our first overseas trip as a family. So that's why I got like the island. I've got a lobster, which is for Robe, which is where my old man's from. Um, yeah. It's known for its like crayfish and, and stuff. So that's cool. got that one. Same arm, got a, a bit of wheat for the farm back home. Yeah. Um, and then where else have I got? Sushi from Japan. And oh, really? Yeah. Where's sushi? I haven't seen that one. It's like under the, under the birds this year. What are the birds? Uh, they're, so they're um, like swallows. So they're, I think like sailors used to get them and it was yeah. like, um, they'd get them because it means they're coming home. Swallows always go home or something. Um, so it's just like a reminder for me for family and, and home, um, which Jules, Piper, and but also like my family back home. Yeah. Um, so got the sushi, Japan, Japanese favorite cuisine. How good's so That's why I got that. How good's teriyaki chicken as well? So good. <laughs> Maybe that could be your next <laughs> one, a bowl of teriyaki chicken. <laughs> chicken udon. Uh, yeah. What else have I got? I got it. I got a few. Yeah. Oh, I got Fugazi on my arm. and Cam Rainer got the same one, actually. Oh, really? I told him Is I was going to Wolf get it. Wall Street? Yeah. yeah that's funny. Favorite movies. Yeah, that's that's why I got that. Um, yeah, I love that movie. So, yeah. uh, always wanted to get Fugazi there. No, that's good. Uh, just got that's bits cool. and pieces. I feel like you're just an individual, which is great. Like, even with the, like, I'm, I still, even we've known each other for so long, like, this chat's been unreal, just like learning and just listening yeah. to you. You know what I mean? And even your stuff away from footy as well. I'm sure everyone would have loved learn a bit more about you and just what you've no, I hope to so. offer. Yeah, it's good no, to give a bit of insight. Chat. I don't yeah. do it too often, so. Oh, well, you're the host Open of the up ball. Open to you, mate. You're the ball, you're the ball magnet's host of this app, so <laughs> when this one absolutely flies, you can take all the credit for it. Nah, absolutely not. But no, nah, it's been good, mate. Um, yeah. no, good to chat. And what do we got? So in final saying, I'm saying Celtics in six. Mavs in six. I think it goes, I think Celtics win today yep. and then it will go three to Mavs. Okay. One Celtics, Mavs finish game right. six. I'll go Celtics win the first two. Mavs the next two. Celtics the next two. All right. I'll throw it on buddy bet. Chuck it, yeah. Throw it <laughs> yeah, on buddy throw, bet. Throw some coin around. <laughs> All right, cool, bro. Easy. Thanks, Good bro. Stuff.